All right, folks, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Len Thompson, and I am Broadcom's Mainframe Division Community Manager. I want to welcome you to today's um, Mainframe Security Insights webcast. Welcome. Um, before I hand you off to Tabala and Narendra, um, a couple of things I need to go over, some housekeeping sort of things. Uh, first, a few questions during the webcast, and we always hope that you do. Please do put them right in the questions box. You'll see that under the GoToWebinar control panel. We'll get through as many of those as we can together today, probably at the end of the session, just to keep, keep the session flow going. Um, if for some reason we can't, uh, if we run out, run out of time, or if there's a, a question that requires a little more research, I will make sure that the team gets everything that they need to respond back to you later this week. Um, secondly, we are recording today's session. That's why your lines are all muted. Uh, the replay will be available out in the Broadcom mainframe, secure, uh, main, mainframe communities uh, later today or first thing tomorrow morning. And the last thing from me is that we always want to make sure that these webcasts are valuable. So uh, with that in mind, a short survey is going to pop up at the end of the webcast. If you could stick around for another extra minute or so and give us some feedback, I know everyone on the team would really appreciate it. That's it for me. So take it away, Bala. Thank you, Len. Hello everyone, I'm Bala, Product Manager for Mainframe Security Insights Platform. We have one more presenter on the line. Narendra, you want to introduce Hi. yourself? Hi guys, good morning, I'm Narendra Sujnani. I'm the Product Owner for the Mainframe Security Insights Platform. Thanks Narendra. Next slide. We have a packed agenda. Today we're we going to talk about the increasing cybersecurity concerns and why it is important to continuously assess the mainframe security posture. We are also going to understand the difference between security audit and security risk assessment and who is responsible for the security assessments on mainframe and what their challenges are. Um, and we are going to demo you how Broadcom solves those challenges using Mainframe Security Insights platform. And we're going to talk about how you can kickstart your uh, assessment journey. Uh, in the end, we'll have a Q&A session as well. Next slide. Let's discuss two most significant security challenges that we hear from our customers. The first one, in the recent uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers 25th Annual Global CEO Survey, CEOs ranked cyber risk as the top threat for their business growth. Yes, cybersecurity is the number one concern for every organization that provides digital experience. Protecting the hybrid environment that includes mainframe from an entirely new generation of highly sophisticated attacks is challenging. Cyber attacks, including like supply chain attacks, targeted ransomware, attacks using the legitimate software are stretching the security operations teams to their limits. On the other side, ever-growing regulatory and compliance requirements and the continued gap in resources, knowledge, and the talent. In 2021, EU pri privacy law, GDPR fines for the breaches spiked to $1.2 billion. It is seven times higher than the previous year. The New York Department of Financial Services imposed heavy fine if there is a violation against multi-factor authentication requirements under the Cybersecurity Regulation Part 500. These growing concerns forcing mainframe IT team to continuously evaluate their security posture. Yes, it's no longer a yearly ritual or answering to your internal audit and cybersecurity teams. It's not the end there. Next slide. Let's understand the difference between security audits and security assessments. Security audits are typically a point in time check 
it mainly focused on the practices and the defined standards. How well do the systems and practices meet the defined standards is the evaluation criteria. Other things are done by a dedicated team or a third party service provider. The outcomes are typically of findings and the corrective actions for the existing security measures or the established security standards. On the other side, assessments are more analytical and diagnostic in approach. It identified what needs to be protected, why and who is responsible or who can access it. Assessing the possibility of security exposure and the impact is key in the assessment. The risk levels and the intensity of the impact that determines the priority of the findings and it recommends to reduce the risks. Next slide. So mainframe security risk assessment involves three major areas. The operating system and the installed software on your ZOS environment, external security manager, and the business application that runs on mainframe. Assessments are typically focused on two major factors. One, the configurations of the softwares, and the other thing, the entitlement risk that you have on your environment. A simple misconfiguration can make an environment vulnerable and it can lead to a serious security exposure. Same way, an incorrect access permission will allow the bad actor to take control of your mainframe environment. The settings are typically one or two step process and it can be achieved using your ZOS or ESM commands. But the entitlement validations are complex and it's multi-step process. It requires the SMEs, security SMEs involvement or the skills. Next slide. Let's review three critical personas who's responsible for such assessments. If you are a security team member, you are responsible to know who has access to the system critical libraries? Is the main is there any misconfigurations on your ZOS or install software environments and ESM that can lead into security exposure? Or you may be responsible to run reports, entitlement reports for your business, checking and making sure the application data is secured. These are today typically manual tasks. You need to run the ZOS ESM commands and collect the data and aggregate the data and provide to the appropriate teams. This is tedious work and repetitive tedious work. If you are a business line owner, you are responsible to know who has access to your application data. Is that data protected? Is that encrypted and protected? If you have a regulated or sensitive data, do you need to know where it is and who has access to that. Again, the, as a business line owner, you are dependent on the security team to obtain the access information and the reports. Doing a security attestation for your business application is also a tedious and repetitive job. Today, most of these activities happen in, in a manual or a script-based approach. It required, again, the knowledge of your environment and also you should, the domain expertise on both security side and the application side. If you are an audit team member or if you're part of the cybersecurity team in your organization, you are responsible to know is the system and the environment is protected. Is the security controls are secured as per the defined standards? How is the business critical data protected and who has access to that? Is the least privilege model enforced on, on the business applications? These are the primary questions the audit team evaluate every time. Typically, we have seen audit team doesn't have mainframe skills and they are heavily dependent on security and application team to interpret the information. These are very common uh, challenges. Next slide. 
the entire assessment process goes on manual effort, collecting, aggregating, consolidating the data from various systems and software is the tedious job. Lack of understanding with the, with the context and the business criticality is also challenging. We continue to see security skill as a major issue with various uh, customer environments. And again, even if you have all these details, evaluating against the standard is another challenging area. The best practices and the standard standards need to be well defined at your organization level. There is a lack of uh, information on this area. And the, the growing complexity and compliance requirement is another challenge all our customers are facing. Next slide. We understand mainframe cybersecurity and compliance is critical for our customer. Broadcom continuously investing and innovating on this space. Security Insights platform is one such a recent innovation, a powerful mainframe risk analysis platform that collects, aggregates, contextually correlates, and interprets the security lifecycle and your environment data. It identifies the security risk and report with remediation to reduce your risk. Next slide. This self-service platform is complementing with other offerings on the portfolio by getting the security lifecycle data. For example, as a first step, we integrated with data content discovery to collect the classification and encryption status of the resources. Broadcom mainframe security software offers best practices across the entire security lifecycle. AAM, Advanced Authentication for Mainframe, is a multi-factor authentication solution. And Trusted Access Manager is a privilege management solution offers you to implement your zero trust on the mainframe. Data Content Discovery is a DLP solution on mainframe. It discovers the PIA and regulated sensitive data and help protect them. And it also helps to get compliance against GDPR PCI standards. CM is a real-time continuous monitoring solution. It allows you to monitor the insider threats and data breaches. And it also has an ability to forward the mainframe security events to a SIM tool such as Splunk, QRadar, and so on. CEM, uh, Cleanup is another uh, tool which actually helps to track your mainframe security database activities and helps remove the absolute unwanted redundant excessive rights on your mainframe environment. We do have Auditor, which is another product which helps you to do the integrity check of your ZOS system. Uh, it evaluates the software, hardware, and your environment integrity. So the, the whole portfolio is, covers the entire life cycle of the mainframe security. Next slide. The primary goal of Security Insights is resolving the key challenges that we discussed. One, how do we reduce the manual effort? Security Insights platform pulls the data across your LPARs from your ZOS and ESM environments and reduce the manual effort. It also interprets, it aggregates and interprets the data and brings the contextual meaning to the, the security information that we are collecting. It automatically analyzes and identify the risk and recommend the remediation, how to reduce the risk 
of your mainframe environment. It reduced the analysis time significantly and it helped to mitigate the risk quickly. At this point, let me hand off to Narendra, who's going to take you through the uh, high level architecture of Security Insights platform. And he's also going to demo the use cases. Narendra? Thanks, Thanks Bala. So, thank you all folks for joining. Uh, as Bala indicated, the existing challenges in mainframe security uh, that relate to risk identification and reduction. So before we look at few focused use cases that are available with Security Insights platform today, uh, we will look at what the building blocks look like. So, so what you see on the left-hand side here are the environment, uh, the ZOS data, data coming from our security products, and we are on the continuous journey to integrate more, but some of the use cases today rely on the external security managers that also includes IBM RACF, and it, uh, one of the other solutions we have in the portfolio for classification, which is the data content discovery. The major building block uh, in the security inside platform at step one is the phase of data collection and aggregation. So uh, we do have uh, Zoe conformant APIs available of these products uh, that security insights uh, leverages to collect the data, aggregate it, uh, give it a, a combined view, um, things like automated aggregation of data across multiple LPARs, and then take it to the next level where we do contextual correlation and more of risk analysis. This is the phase where interpretation is involved because what our customers seek is best practices guidance to remediate identified risk. Today, much of this is dependent on the subject matter experts, and there's always a need to get beyond the auditor checklist. For example, show me risk which is outside of what the auditor requires. How that helps us? It helps us focus. It helps us save time and effort by focusing on the highlighted risk and prioritizing our activities. So one thing to note here is in the two phases, first phase with the data collection and aggregation, the second phase being interpretation and driving towards remediation. That is the life cycle uh, that security insight platform today uh, depends on uh, to deliver some of these use cases. As Security Insights offers a web reporting application, uh, a web-based modern application that you can use to run reports in a self-service manner, as well as there are APIs available that are Zoe confirmant that you could use in your applications if there is a need to get direct access to some of this information. So with that set in mind, we can um, look at uh, the focused use cases that we have today. And the first one we have is uh, identifying access to system critical resources. So the requirement here is as a security administrator, uh, I want to identify who has access to system critical resources. Uh, for example, APF libraries, Palm libraries, uh, link libraries or LPA libraries. And the intent is the need to align to least privilege model. Uh, we know that's the practice of limiting user access rights to the minimum level that is required to perform their job function. Uh, why is that needed? Because some of these system critical libraries are keys to the kingdom. They have the ability to bypass and compromise integrity of our ZOS environments. So knowing who can access these libraries lets you begin uh, limiting and securing access to them. And in the process, you also adhere to the principle of least privilege and reduce your overall risk to mainframe data. So one thing to note here is much of this processing is done in organizations today, but there are steps involved. And if I take APF list as an example, the first step is deriving libraries in the APF library for one of the LPARs that you have. Uh, maybe the ESM is shared across LPARs or they are standalone ESMs a setup for each of the LPARs. It's a manual and a tedious process for the first step to get what that list is. Then for every library you've got, you determine who has access. That's as good as in each ESM using their own reporting tools or commands to get that list. Now, each of them produce, in each of the ESM produces information in its own format. There's no normalization in place. And assuming that you've derived the pieces that are needed, then there is a manual step of aggregating uh, 
either manually or using a custom script. Uh, then comes the next phase. Okay, you put all the information together, but where do I start? That's where the interpretation of risk factors come in. So there is, again, a subject matter expertise need here to come and look at the data, to derive pieces, and then prioritize activities and define a plan of action here. So, so one thing we can see here, how Security Insights addresses this problem. And as we go through the use cases, I'll be hopping off onto a demo to show how we solve this use case and uh, to open up for more uh, feedbacks and thoughts as they come along. So what I'll do here is for a moment, uh, navigate into our application uh, to show how we've addressed this with Security Insights and how you could do that in a self-service way in a few clicks. So let me get to the application and I hope uh, you're able to see uh, the browser, uh, Bala or Len, if you can confirm. Good. Yes, you're okay. able to see your browser. That's great. So uh, what I did here was I used the application, the Security Insights platform. I provided my mainframe credentials uh, to log on to the system where Security Insights is deployed. It's 100% on the platform. That's the reason I used my mainframe secur uh, security credentials. And as I logged in, what I'm presented here with are some use case styles. So the first focus use case we looked at was identifying access to system critical resources that's accessible using a sample tile, uh, the style here. Uh, one thing is how do you get uh, time to value or to understand what this use case offers? So you can always review a sample output to see the va value prior to capturing additional lifecycle data. So there's, there's a sample report that you can navigate and look at one. Uh, we will look at that. But the general workflow in Security Insights is centered around building a report. These reports uh, run in a deferred batch fashion uh, so that uh, Security Insights gets the opportunity to do the heavy lifting of aggregation and interpretation. So in this particular use case, uh, I have a system selected that runs top secret, but if you had multiple systems configured into SI, you would see a list of systems here and each depending on the ESM will present the access levels. So in my case, I'm interested to know who has update like access to my system critical libraries. So I select all, but read, fetch, none is something that I don't want to scope as part of this report. Then comes the aspect of risk modeling. This is the means to tell what risk factors are critical to your finding or the project you're adventing towards and would you want to use anything else other than the out of the box configuration that's aligned to best practices that Broadcom provides today. So we will look at this, but there are a couple of risk factors based on which you will know um, the findings, the outcomes elevated based on the factors as you've configured it. So for example, if an all security record or a global access exists against a data set or an APF library, and if that's update like that's high risk to me. If there are more, if my department has five system programmers who only need to have access to this, but somehow the access uh, threshold is going beyond five, I need to be uh, aware of that. So this is the means to configure the factors based on which the risk findings or the interpretation and remediation steps are driven. What we will do here is we will use the out of the box configuration, but you have a way to create your own configuration as well. Okay, and then I've pre-selected uh, all the four uh, libraries uh, areas like the APF authorized, link list, LPA list, parameter libraries, and we have another uh, use case where you'll be able to provide your own uh, data set names as well. So we will look at that next, but what we'll do here is go ahead and build a report, report uh, give it a name, uh, subscribe for notifications uh, so that you're alerted as uh, um, the report completes and you have the opportunity to come back and review the results. So what's happened here is we've submitted a report. The background work of all the steps involved that we were looking at in this slide are being accomplished now. And as this report runs, uh, I would navigate back into a sample report to show what this outcome looks like or what are the pieces of information that are presented here. So we look at a sample report for top secret and one thing as you get into here is identify in the results there is 
the first thing is all the data sets that were found across the system critical resources that I selected. Um, one of the risk factors presented is for the volume that was specified, for example, on APF library, was the data set found or not found? Because a not found data set can have implications if somebody has allocate access, because they can allocate a library with same name, introduce a rogue module, and bypass your operating system integrating integrity capabilities. So that's the way for a bad actor on the mainframe to introduce uh, vulnerabilities into the system. So one of the risk factors we focus on is, is the data set existent on the volume as it appears in the operating system definitions in the PowerMail. Then we identify, is there global access associated? Uh, for example, are there users who have uh, update like uh, access to the all security record. So since it's all it's universal access Is there entitlement count that crosses a certain threshold? So we sum up and correlate uh, uh, The findings of how many users have access that's rolled up into the entitlement count and then you will have the opportunity to, to drill down and view more details But one thing to note here is we present a risk level this label helps you identify what are the findings that you should zone upon at the first? For example, I go with the significant findings as I have it here, because these are categories of risk factor that I've told are important to my finding here. And as they look into this risk factor, I can see uh, that there are several with various categories. And if I zone into one of them, uh, I'm presented for a data set, few pieces of information that are even more critical in the detailed view. One is who are the users who have access? So I see three users here having update access and all of that access coming through a group. Uh, in this case, it's a top secret profile um, that has update access. So I can zone down into a group level, find out who, who the users are or directly navigate into the users level. So that's from a data aggregation standpoint. But for interpretation, we've told you that this is high risk. Now let's look at what factors contributed to high risk right so i said okay if the data set was found it's an important rule but if it is found it's nominal finding um if i have entitlement ground greater than five that's a risky finding for me so we are good here but there is something a global access which is read and that was a significant rule because it is important to me uh, from an overall risk finding perspective and I do have a medium finding there. So you see that uh, here it was read, but uh, if you take another example, it will turn out to be high because I do have update like access to the sys1.lplm and that's a critical finding that we want to call out here. So you can also download this view uh, or the overall results in a full report in a CSV format and uh, use that in uh, other reporting applications. So there is a means to export uh, the information that we are seeing here. Uh, so considering this, you've seen that the much of the steps involved uh, and the heavy lifting you had to do, we accomplished that in a few clicks here using the Security Insights platform. And by, by this time, the report should have completed. And then a sample report, I have findings from the environment that we had selected. So I can again zone down into significant and moderate findings here and see what the results look like. So I do have several significant highs uh, filter on the entitlement count and you can see there are a few uh, which uh, have has an entitlement count associated based on the criteria that we have set up here for the access level. So considering this, uh, we looked at our first focus use cases and building with that thought in mind, let's look at what's the second one. So we've started with our journey with system critical libraries and we continue adding. So you might wonder where are proclips, where are other definitions? So we are on a journey to add those. But meanwhile, what we've given from a business centric or application owner perspective is give them a means to identify who has access to the business critical data because this piece of information is needed for regular attestation. It's needed for internal audit processes. So again here, there are multiple steps involved. First, a business, a line of business telling and providing an inventory of business critical libraries. 
So I have a line of business owner getting in touch with the security administrator operations team, telling that these are the list of data sets that I'm concerned about. And what the security team needs to do is navigate through each one of them or input that in their existing script and get to the level of information that's needed here on who has access and then what are the risks uh, existent in those entitlements today. So this is also a multi-step process and we can address this with security insights again in a few steps here. So building with that thought in mind, um, what we can do here is look into the second use case type uh, which is identify access to specified resources. So from a build report workflow, it's pretty much the same other than you have the opportunity of uh, providing the uh, data set names, uh, masked or unmasked, fully qualified. You can specify that, uh, uh, specify all your business critical data sets. At some point, we will also provide the ability to create lists so that you can define a list and run this on a recurrent basis. Uh, so with the uh, place we are right now, you have the ability to provide uh, all your business critical uh, data sets into here and submit a report just like you did. Uh, for us to view what that report looks like, let's look at an example here. So here I do see a bunch of data sets that were provided masked either at multi-level or, or a single character mask uh, and even fully qualified. And uh, this provides me information surrounding what is the risk level, uh, what's the data source, is there any universal access or global access, uh, in this case, any permissions assigned to the all security record, and what is the entitlement count. Just like before, we can drill down into a specific entity, look at the risk findings at a granular level for each of the risk factors that are provided, look at which users have access, are the users who are not uh, granted access through a group or a profile? Is there opportunity here for us to centralize this access via a group? So this provides us that opportunity as well. And at the same time, you can look in, into a group view and see which groups have access and what permissions do they possess. For example, the uh, DB2 prof has a create access and the other sys prof has a fetch access. So I would particularly be concerned about DB2 prof and see if the member association and that looks right. So this is also an opportunity not just to get access information for a data set, but to also drill down into which users have it, which groups have it, and are those the right members who should be part of that group. So, so that's what our second use case is centered around. And going back to this, if you see, we've gone through multiple phases here. We went with the data collection phase, uh, call it discovery, then we correlated it with uh, entitlements and other risk factors. We use those risk factors to analyze risk and then we uh, report risk and provide remediation steps. So you saw those remediation steps that are textual. These are the perspectives uh, subject matter expertise brings and through the security life cycle that Bala uh, showed us earlier, you will have ability to identify what pieces can you address uh, using that life cycle steps to resolve and reduce the security risk that's included here? And that was the second use case. Moving along with this thought, one of the other use cases that we've also progressed to is providing classified information uh, for data sets and telling us if those data sets are encrypted. So uh, knowing that PII, PCI, uh, and other regulatory information exists in data set or libraries is very critical to a line of business. And we know that uh, the organizations know that that information needs to be present, but it needs to be secured or encrypted. So we give you a view into telling, okay, this is the data set. Uh, this is the classification of that. When was it last scanned? Uh, what classified data exists? We don't show the contents. Uh, but we show at which location and which line position is that sensitive data present. That's all done using our data content discovery, but SI security insights take it a level about that. We not just tell you uh, what the classified information uh, of or the status of that data set is, 
we also tell you if that data set is pervasively encrypted. Many of our customers are already on the journey to use IBM's pervasive encryption, and we provide you the ability to not just look at the classification or to look at pervasive encryption, but also show what are the key labels associated to that. So the key label, uh, anybody who has read access will be able to look at that data in clear text, but for any other user who does not have access to key label can look at the data, but it will all appear as ciphers. So again, there's a multi-step process involved for an existing organization to look at this. First is defining an inventory of business critical libraries. For every library, use a tooling of some sort to get classification status. In our case, we rely on data content discovery because it's one of those solutions on the platform uh, that provides you classification insights. Then we need to look up encryption status for that data set, and this is an environmental perspective. So for every classified data set, you have to look up encryption status, look at the key label, find who has access to it, and then do the manual aggregation, bring in a SME to interpret the risk and identify a plan of action. So with security insights, we've addressed that using our uh, self service based mechanism that we have available in the product today so you come here into the application um, go into this type build a report again select a system specify the data sets you're interested in provide masks as needed uh, use a risk configuration that helps you uh, put in a different perspective of factors based on which the risk analysis would be done and build a report so from a workflow standpoint, this is very consistent to what you've seen earlier. Um, I'll show a sample report uh, while we are here for the time efficiencies to see what that representation looks like. So I have a line of business who've said, I want information about all sales, finance, and operations data set. And uh, the good part is uh, uh, masking, wildcarding provides us the convenient ab abilities to look up at a high level qualifier level. And what we've done here is we've enumerated that into the data sets that exist on the system. Uh, we provide uh, what is the classification count as in, uh, for example, you take the first data sets, it was scanned for eight classifiers in DCD, but there are four classifiers which were found. We can drill down and see what those were, but an important correlative piece here is whether the pervasive encryption was, into, uh, was implemented. And if yes, what's the key label? So if I take uh, uh, one with significance, and let me also add a pervasive encryption of no. So these are the ones that we would want to zone in because these are data sets that have uh, classified data sets, but they are not adequately protected. So let's drill down into the details. So from a classifier standpoint, it tells us that we've scanned it for these regulated pieces of information. We found passport number and uh, tax identification number in place for this data set. Then looking at the risk level, uh, since the classifier match count was a finding a high, it is not pervasive encrypted. Whether the data set was scanned or not within data content discovery is also a risk factor. So we put all these pieces of information and then present you the accumulated risk findings at a risk level. So if you really look at it, the risk on this data set trumps uh, the one that uh, uh, the other data sets uh, findings present. So something that we should care about, something that we got to do something about to resolve the risk, because it's critical uh, to zone in and uh, getting uh, the environment more secure. So with that context in mind, let me uh, focus on a few key benefits that we have uh, with security insights. So in addition to being modern, 100% on the platform and secure, because all the reports that I have run would rely on my native security score. So for example, if I did not have permissions to look up classification uh, data using data content discovery, I wouldn't be able to do that. If I cannot do who has on a data set to get who has entitlements, I wouldn't be able to look at those pieces of information. So it's completely secure in that sense. The few capabilities that stand out is the ability to provide self-service mechanism so that you can focus on strategic initiatives, 
not be inundated with security requests for major part of your day providing information for business compliance and audit teams in addition the skills challenge is pervasive and this only amplifies with the complexity of data we are looking at the number of vectors that we add to increases the complexity but it is important to look at those vectors because they contribute to the modern threat landscape so security insights helps here in not just pulling data together as we as we've seen but in interpreting interpreting what was found so that it can offer you some recommendations to drive remediation steps then that's possible using a risk reporting feature and broadcom provides an out of the box model that's based on best practices in, uh, for the platform so for you it's as simple as uh, logging into this uh, solution uh, creating a report or uh, in the interested uh, area of the use case and depending on the uh, finding and project you're involved with and as good as it gets offload this responsibility to other members in the team who might not be as skilled because si uh, security insights has taken the burden of resolving that for you so with this uh, in mind i will turn over to bala and uh, We'll open up for more discussion and questions as they come along. Thank you, Narendra. Uh, thanks for the detailed demo, how we are solving the challenges around the cybersecurity uh, assessment, risk assessment. Okay, so where do we start? Like, how Bradcom help you to start this your assessment journey? Uh, we have a system called mainframe resource intelligence which provides a security essentials assessment um, you don't need to install any software you, there is a toolkit that you need to download and, and run in your lpar and upload the data to the mri mainframe resource intelligence portal that will automatically assess your data and provide you a report this is a high level evaluation about your mainframe security that's a good starting point with a cyber thinking workshop cyber thinking workshops are specifically focused on your organization uh, cyber security challenges uh, it's a focused conversation with you and your, uh, your compliance team and um, we we will help you to uh, identify the priorities and the tailored uh, solution for your challenges uh, both MRI scan, security scan, a security assessment, and the cyber thinking workshops are available with no cost to you. Next slide. Okay, how do we start uh, with the security insights platform? Um, here are some resources. Uh, the product info, you can find the product information on, on the Broadcom website. We have it technical documentation links on this and we do have a youtube channel where we have all the use cases uh, in in a uh, use case demos as a videos uh, one most interesting and important information if you are a broadcom mainframe security customers you already have entitlement to security insights you no need to pay any additional cost you can go to your product download page and you can download the security insights today. Uh, our team, our adoption squad team also going to help you uh, throughout the journey, starting from um, explaining you the prerequisites and planning for your installation and configuration and all the way to roll out your production. Please do contact your Broadcom account managers if you wanted to get our support. We talked about various skill related issues. Broadcom uh, taking this seriously and investing on this area heavily. We have web-based trainings. If you are a Broadcom customer with active maintenance, you get all the Broadcom product trainings at free of cost. You can use the web-based trainings. If you need instructor lead training, you can contact the uh, Broadcom account managers to arrange for you. If you wanted to expand your teams with the new talents, we are also supporting with Vitality program. We hire and train and mentor the new talents for you uh, with, a, with a bootcamp training 
all the way from basic zeroes skills programming skills and also we train them on the specific product that you want want them to be in so these are some of the core uh, values that we are actually along with our solutions we are offering to our customers next slide we also talked about the the issue around the best practices what is the appropriate settings to protect my mainframe how do i how do i define my standards every organization need to customize and have their own standards not only for the operating system and the external security managers every software that you are running on your mainframe needs to be carefully configured and protected and and, and secured broadcom feel responsible and we are started adding security technical implementation guides for our products we have security uh, sticks for acf2 top secret cleanup sysview endeavor opsmvs the common services component and idms you can see the new section on our tech docs called using sticks article and you can take advantage of uh, implementing your, your security configurations Typically, a STIG article contains uh, how to uh, how to find the security issues, if whether it is a finding or not, and if if it is a finding, how to remediate that, and it is also going to help you identify whether this particular security control need to be continuously monitored or not, and how to monitor. Next slide. Okay, so we are at the end of the session. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we can take the questions right now. Len? All right, thanks, guys. The only question we have so far is, are we able to get a copy of the deck? Yes. Um, well, if you, you wouldn't mind sending me the, the, the final version, I will make it a PDF, and I'll post it out in the community later today. Sure. So yes, it will be available along with, with the replay out in the communities. Folks, we do uh, we do have a few minutes, so if you have any questions, please do put them right in the questions box. We'll give you a few seconds to type. And I will also take this opportunity to remind you about our post-event survey. There's also a, a spot there if you want to ask a question there as well. All right, I don't see anything coming in, so I guess we can go ahead and wrap up Bala and Narendra. Thank you very much. And to everyone who joined us today, we really appreciate uh, your time. We know there's a lot of virtual events happening these days, so uh, we appreciate you giving us some of your some of your busy time. So have a great day, everybody, and we'll, we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank everyone. you.